They kind of follow that. You can't, you can't move something without the, that something being strong enough. But if North America was lubricated with water underneath and the mantle popped up, it's going for a ride because there's no friction. The water's keeping the friction until it runs out of water or runs into something. This is, this is now the earth flooded with water and the ground is just barely flooded. You have to remember that the, the Bible says that all the land was flooded at 22 and a half feet. The highest piece of land was 22 and a half feet underwater. <coughs> so, when the crust started moving, if this, if this crushes, then that means that I have more of a place for water to go into because the land is going to crush up and the water is going to have room to go in, into and the water level will go down. Does everybody follow that? And so then the dry land appears as the continent, which was, let's say, 5,000. I don't know that that was accurate. When North America comes to a crushing halt, thickening the crust, creating mountain ranges, flipping over pieces of crust and sedimentary layers, which we see all over the place. Uplift, vertically uplift, huge sedimentary layers that were laid down horizontal, like in my hometown of Colorado, west of Denver, there's a place called Red Rocks. Huge sedimentary layers lifted up, crushed. And we can't use water in here. Now what we're going to do is show, and, and what we're going to do is have the water go in here. We're going to Show that it's all flooded, drain it into a bucket, and then lift the bucket up, have the water lubricated, and find out that you don't have to lift it very high at all before it to take a ride. So pretend I'm not lifting it very high, but then we go up like this. And if we had been flooded before when we put the water in, our shoreline's here, and here's the Olympic Cascade Mountain Range. And I have a crust that's above water. Does everybody follow that? So in the question of where did all the water go? Well, all the water ran off into the widening ocean basins because the continents were crushing like this. You had a 10 mile deep for every mile that that, that, that crust uh, narrowed because it's building up into mountains. That's a one mile thick, 10 mile deep area for water to run off into. What does the Bible say? God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the water subsided. I know some people that went over to watch the kingdom and, you know, be destroyed. Anybody here go to the kingdom? Oh yeah, you were there, Lauren, and others. There was a huge, for those that were there, it was like, wow. Uh, as that kingdom went down, it just sent debris everywhere. Why? Because all of a sudden you have huge solid thing displacing a bunch of air. And it created the huge wind that threw that debris all over downtown Seattle. Imagine uh, hundreds of thousands of square miles of land coming up out of, out of the water. And as that land's coming up out of the water, it's displacing air. The foundations of the deep and the windows of the heaven were also stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained. Because as soon as it did that, now the, the earth is again s sitting down in the mantle. There's not much water left underneath the earth, but there is water. Walt Brown has theorized that, that wa there is still water underneath all the mountain ranges of the earth. They've done a recent discovery underneath the Himalayan mountain range that they said that by their conductivity measurements, there must be brackish aqueous solution underneath the Himalayan mountain range. There is a deficiency of gravity underneath every mountain range. Why? Because water weighs less than rock. And they're, and they're shocked because they can measure gravity, which is based on mass, and if they assume that the height of the mountain is, is rock mountain all the way down to the center of the earth, there should be the same density and the, and the gravity associated with that density. But they find out that there's not as much because there's water underneath the mountain ranges. And it's, so there's a gravity deficiency. <clears throat> and the waters receded continually from the earth at the end of the 150 days, the waters decreased. And Job says, the book of Job says, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? Was the, the door that shut when the crust came to a stop and the tips of the, where the water had been coming out at the tips of the crack, sat down in the mantle as the mantle popped up, shutting the doors, not letting any more of the subterranean water out? 
when I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors, when I said, this far you may come, but no further in here, your proud waves must stop. Psalm 104 says, uh, verse 5, You who laid the foundations of the earth, so that it should not be moved forever, you covered it, the earth, with the deep, as with a garment the water stood above the mountains. The flood occurred. You know, God's saying, hey, the flood occurred, you know, the psalmist is saying the flood occurred, and at your rebuke, they, the waters, fled. At your voice of your thunder, they hastened away. They went up and over the mountains. Now, now the psalmist is saying, you flooded the earth. At your rebuke, the waters started going up and over the mountains. Well, now, water doesn't go up and over mountains uh, unless it's unless it's doing so because the mountains are crushing and water is running off of this continent and it would have gone up, you know, off of the highest mountain, like the Rocky Mountains, heading west and it would have been washing all the way over to the west coast, all the way over to the east coast, rapidly running off of the continent. And any broken pieces of crust or, or other items would have been going for a ride, a rock tumbling effect as they're running off of the rising continent. They went up and over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place which you founded for them. They went down into the valleys and the place you founded for them. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. These are solid chunks of granite, crustal granite, that have been rock tumbled sitting, uh, you know, and I think this is in Australia. These things are found all over the earth. In fact, if you go down on, on Interstate 15, down um, from Marietta, down to San Diego, you'll see on the sides these massive granite boulders that are rounded off on the side of the road. When I ro drive down that road, I go, thank you, Jesus. I know how those granite boulders got there. They got there, they probably came from Colorado, and just <laughs> up and over the mountains and just came crashing down and rock tumbling as they, as they went. How do you explain that at 13,000 feet in the Andes Mountains in Peru that there are petrified giant oysters? You know, some would say aliens dropped them there. <laughs> but, uh, and there's other pictures. You can do giant oysters, Andes Mountains, see other pictures on a web search. How did they get there? This was an area that did not receive, for whatever reason, did not get some of the sediment that was coming, or it washed off at the recently laid sediments of the earth washed off as the crust of the Andes, as the Andes Mountains was coming up, as South America was crushing to the west, these giant oysters that were sitting on the bottom, they grew to 13,000 feet and then are sitting there for us to find. And uh, another example that can be found, that the sedimentary layers in the area of the Grand Canyon They've, they've studied the Grand Canyon probably more than any other canyon in the world, and there's, there's partially uplifted, formerly horizontal layers. And this one is a quartzite layer. Uh, this guy right here is a quartzite layer. 